G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing this yet again another off-season series I'm doing where I'm going through each of the AFL clubs and uh, in this series I'm talking about some New Year's resolutions that each club might have and today we are doing the Richmond Football Club. So to be perfectly clear, the, the premise of this video is to focus on some little goals or uh, desired outcomes for each individual team in 2024. In some cases it might be as simple as, you know, ladder position or, um, you know, win a final or something like that. But different teams will have different, you know, desired outcomes and Richmond is probably one of those clubs where, at least in my opinion, what actually happens from a win-loss uh, ratio point of view, how many games they win this year, how high they finish on the ladder, is probably less important to them than some other teams. I think it's more about what happens from an on-field point of view in terms of developing and unearthing and developing some talent in general. So I've picked out eight here for the Richmond Football Club. Um, if you are a Richmond fan, you've just discovered this channel. I have done a 2024 Best 22 analysis for the Richmond Footy Club, and I've also done a video mapping out their Best 22 three years from now. I've done that for every club in the league, so you can find that on very playlist on this channel. I will leave links to that in the top right corner of this video. If you want to click the little icon up there, you can find access to um, Richmond videos and some more general AFL content too. Before we crack into this video, I do have a person to shout out, the newest member of the True Footy YouTube channel, someone called Ben McMillan, who has joined up. So thank you very much for becoming a member of this channel. The response and the support has been fantastic to this new feature on the channel. So uh, I really appreciate all the support. Let's get into the video. So, like I said, with the Richmond Footy Club, uh, it's an interesting one where um, I, I'm trying not to repeat myself, but when you make so much content over an off-season, it's hard not to. But they are an interesting one, for sure. And like I said, I think a lot of their goals and focuses and key aims out of 2024 will be less so about the amount of games they win. When you compare it to, you know, perhaps Port Adelaide, that's the next team I'm doing, a team that's in contention, Richmond are undoubtedly in a bit of a transition. And whether or not you accept that there's a rebuild coming or what, maybe it's just a reset. Either way, the fact that they're adapting to a new coach in particular is probably the first thing that they need to do. So that's that's the, uh, the first resolution I have for the Richmond Football Club in 2024. And uh, that is to develop and adapt to a game style under Adam Uze, their new coach. Obviously, Hardwick was, did a fantastic job. Uh, for the, in fact, one of the greatest coaches of the modern era. I probably undersold it there. Uh, they had a caretaker in McWalter. They decided to go with Uze. And now there's going to be a gelling period. And there may be some friction. And what I mean by friction, I don't mean like people not liking each other necessarily, but just some time to adapt to a new game style, whatever that might look like. And I did a little bit of research into this. And we know Damien Hardwick's game style was kind of iconic. It was almost somewhat revolutionary in the way they played with their pressure style. But naturally, the game's got to evolve and uh, it'll be interesting to see the way Uze takes this team going forward. And I did a little bit of research and see if I could find any indication of what his style might be. I do quote here, he says, it's been three years since we've won a final, so there has to be a subtle change and hopefully I can bring that change. So earmarking change while also suggesting that there might not be a drastic change to the way the Richmond play their football. He says, but the foundations of this football club and the team are really strong. I'm just hoping to bring my knowledge and experience of what I've learned and bring my slant on the way that we should play. So hopefully we can bounce back really quickly. So uh, paraphrasing, he is suggesting that there will be slight tweaks as you'd expect to the game style, but may perhaps not anything too revolutionary. So I suppose the resolution is just adapting to the way Uze wants to play uh, in terms of Richmond football this year as quickly as possible. It may be that, you know, the game style will evolve over time. Obviously, game styles do need to be adapted to the playing list that is there. There's no point him um, coming up with, say, a mark and chip style if this football club is not accustomed to that and this list hasn't been drafted for that. So I'd imagine whatever game style he does bring will evolve over time. But there is usually an adaptation period uh, under new coaches and Richmond will want to make sure that happens as quickly as possible with this coach. The second resolution will be life after Jack Rewalt, specifically uh, finding a key forward partner there with Tom Lynch in that forward line. Now we do know they've just recruited Justin, uh, Jacob Kaczynski, sorry, Justin Kaczynski, I think is his cousin. Uh, but Jacob Kaczynski has obviously been recruited from the Hawthorne Football Club. After about a goal a game in his first 50 games, he only had the nine goals from 12 games this year, fell out of form, but that's not to suggest as a 23 year old key position player that he doesn't have the potential to take his game to a next level in 2024. And that will be the desired outcome here for Richmond is if Kaczynski in particular can find his feet very quickly and become a good solid one-two punch with Tom Lynch as early as next year. We know he's shown some promise at AFL level. In, uh, in his first 20 games, he kicked 27 goals, which is pretty good output. 
still only 23 and the potential is there. What other ways they could experiment with that? I believe there's been some talk about potentially Josh Gibkiss once he comes back into the side being used as a forward. Same thing with Noah Bolter. Um, I'm not too sure exactly how that would play out, but regardless, the, the broadly speaking, the overall resolution is to find a second key forward, whether it be Kaczynski making a stamp on that position, whether it be Gibkiss or Bolter, whether it be Liam Fawcett, who they've just drafted, to probably bet against that given his age. Uh, there's also Jacob Bau who could feature in this team. Uh, he's played the four games, kicked four goals, and probably not a true key forward from memory. I think he might be a little bit smaller than your typical key forward. Maybe all three of them play, but either way, finding a combination that works will be a key focus for Richmond in 2024. The next one is a bit more of a broad one, and that's just about giving exposure to kids, and this is arguably one of the most important aspects of this season, whether it be pumping games into the kids that they are confident are going to be there, or simply getting answers on some players that they're you know not too sure about. Um, a couple of players that come to mind, so Sam Banks has played six games, one of their more talented young prospects from the outside looking in. Same thing with Tom Brown. Both of these guys went in the second round of 2021. Uh, Tom Brown's played one game, Sam Banks has played six, but I'd imagine a key focus for Richmond will be exposing these guys to AFL level where, where reasonable and where it makes sense. Tyler Young is another player that got some experience this year. He played all of his 19 games this year and I think did a really good job as a one-on-one -on -one defender. Uh, James Trezise has played one game and uh, did pretty well on debut. Played, uh, had 17 touches. I think it was against Port. I think, forgive me, I don't remember exactly who it was against. It might have been Adelaide. But either way, certainly a candidate for someone that they need to give games to to try and you know transition this list. Another one is Samson Ryan. Obviously, he got a good taste of it last year with 12 goals from 14 games and getting about 12 hitouts a game. So really shaping as a good key position prospect as a bit of a ruck forward who can potentially become a proper ruck one day or a primary ruck rather. Uh, but at the moment, him getting uh, games as potentially that third tall forward in that forward line, that's something as well to look forward to. So broadly speaking, give exposure to these kids, get some answers and hopefully find a few gems. The next resolution I've, I've jotted down is uh, it's phrased in a very inflammatory way, but hear me out. I put justify the trades for Taranto and Hopper. Um, so obviously that does sound inflammatory, but I'll explain exactly what I mean. And uh, when I say justify, I know that Taranto had his, his arguably his career best season. He had some good ones at GWS, but he, he certainly ticked the box. Hopper probably to a lesser degree, but either way, obviously the Richmond uh, trades for Taranto and Hopper the opportunity cost that they got out of that was going two years in a row without meaningful draft picks. So what I'm really saying here is that Taranto and Hopper, they want to continue at the output that justified Richmond trading such heavy draft collateral for them. And what that would look like is simply putting in regular consistent shifts as senior midfielders in this team and I guess giving protection to the younger mids around them. So while, I've, while it's a resolution, I'm, I don't actually mean to suggest that Taranto or Hopper haven't justified the trades yet. However, this will be something that is certainly a desired outcome from this year is that Taranto and Hopper are pulling their weight and just justifying the heavy price tag that was paid for them. While on the topic of uh, Richmond having late picks in drafts, the next point I've put is to unearth an unexpected talent from their later picks. So over the last two years, they've had, I think, two draft picks in the both of the last two drafts. They've taken Steely Green and Caleb Smith, both out of WA, Liam Fawcett, a young key forward, uh, and then Kane McCullough from South Australia. I think Liam Fawcett might be South Australian too. The point being is uh, Richmond in particular, but other clubs over the stretch have generally been able to build premiership lists through really shrewd drafting later in drafts. Richmond might be the best example of them all, but there's also Geelong, uh, to some extent Hawthorne, I think, and Fremantle's actually been really good at it too. Not all those sides have won premierships, of course. However, Richmond and the Cats in particular, I'd say, have genuinely been able to build premiership lists with a really strong foundation of players that have been taken late in drafts or even the rookie draft in Richmond's case and become really solid role players. So the, the resolution, I suppose, is one or more of these young players in Steely Green, Smith, Fawcett, McAuliffe turning out to be better than their draft position would suggest. I'm not saying one of these players needs to be an absolute A grader, but if Caleb Smith can come in and play as a small defender this year, or Steely Green comes in as a sort of a forward midfielder and plays better than expected, that would be a really nice outcome for Richmond, because what they don't want is to walk away from the 22 and 23 drafts with nothing to show for it. The next resolution I've put is get Josh Gibkiss fit and healthy, arguably one of their, probably their best and high, most highly rated young talent, uh, who was taken at pick nine, I want to say, in the 2021 draft as a young key position defender, played 18 games in his first season, showed some really good signs, and then I believe he damaged his hamstring tendon 
at training one day and miss the entire 2023 season. So his development is as important as any other individual player on their list, I would argue. Uh, I think Kipkis does possess a lot of really good traits for a modern day key defender. His intercepting is really strong. He flies for marks. His closing speed is really good. His spoiling, and I do think his best position is probably as a key defender, even though I alluded to the fact he might be utilized forward. And we'll see what happens. I could be wrong naturally. Uh, but that being said, get him into the side one way or another, give him a role and let him develop at AFL level. I think that would be a really important and uh, beneficial outcome for Richmond in 2024. Another resolution I have for the Richmond Footy Club, which I am certain will happen, um, and that is to capitalize on the draft collateral they've accumulated for the 2024 draft and make sure they turn them into early picks. So I have talked about this in previous drafts, but they did, they did some live trading um, at the 2023 draft and really accumulated a lot of points for this upcoming draft. So specifically, they have 6, 25, 26, 39, 43, 44, and there's more after that. Uh, so essentially they've got an extra second rounder, two extra third rounders, and then I think an extra fourth rounder as well. And the benefit of this is with the uh, prospect of Academy picks and Father Sons coming up in 2024, they can use all those later picks, package them and trade them to those clubs who are perhaps willing to downgrade in the draft for more points. Uh, as we saw with the Gold Coast and the Western Bulldogs, and we saw with Collingwood and Nick Dacos. So there's tons of examples by now. So I think Richmond are in a prime position to regardless of where they finish on the ladder, get in some early draft picks because I think God knows their list needs it. This one I am certain will happen. Um, Richmond, I think, have accumulated these points for a specific reason. I'd also put as a little tidbit um, as a little sub-resolution is probably just to explore the free agency market this year and see if they can lure a relatively big name. A few that I wrote down that might be out of reach are like Ben Ainsworth, Jared Berry, Andrew McGrath, these guys who will be free agents who Richmond could potentially, at least theoretically, acquire without giving away any draft collateral. So I think that's something that they should scale the market for because salary cap won't be an issue. And as long as they keep their draft picks, I think that's a good move. But primary focus is getting those later picks and turning them into multiple first round selections if they can. And finally, the eighth point is probably just to try and unearth a genuine midfield successor to what they already have. So I just nominate a few players on their list that we have heard about but haven't seen a lot of, or to some extent we have. But, um, you know, Tyler Sonzi is a player that's played 10 games at AFL level and was somewhat highly rated in his draft year. He's played 10 overall, but just three in 2023. Thompson Dow has played 17 games at the level, but just four this year. I think those sorts of players are the ones we need to get an answer on. And it's probably a bit of a part B to an earlier resolution I made though. But specifically the midfield, seeing a, a Sonzi or a Dow really expose a little bit more and take their game to the next level could be a huge plus for them. And then Sam Banks as well, who I think was drafted as a halfback flanker, but potentially we might see on a wing this year. Played just six games, but again, I think another important one for Richmond to, to try and expose this year. I feel like it's been a while since Richmond sort of had a, a midfield prospect drafted that uh, has really come on. I think of Riley Collier Dawkins, who was close enough to a first rounder a few years ago and was delisted after 11 games. So that would be a, a nice little win. I'm not saying that Sonzi has to be an A grader, but if he proves himself to be an AFL level midfielder or Thompson Dow, that would be a huge win for Richmond in 2024. So that's what I got for the Richmond Football Club, guys. As always, I welcome your comments in the comments section below. By all means, go and find the other Richmond content I've made this year if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, let me know in the comments what, uh, what I got wrong and uh, any other resolutions that you can think of for this club. So I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.